song, give it to me. Come on, say it again. Aliyah, come here, baby.
your word, your word, your word. Free right now. For every addiction. Addiction, I speak to you right now. Addiction, I speak to you right now. I don't care what form it is. I command you in the name of Jesus to let God's people go. Addiction, smoking, pornography, drinking, cussing, whatever it is. Addictions, 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 addictions. We declare freedom. 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 He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He who the sun sets free is free indeed.
respectfully take your seat in the presence of the Lord. last month that this is this is the year of the shining face this is the year of the shining face rain fire is not the same rain fire that you knew before we've gone to another level those who seek the Lord will find him we're not trying to draw people out of advertising and out of marketing and out of special guests the greatest special guest that should be in the house of God is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Not to say that there's anything wrong with having special guests. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you only come to the house of God because you want to hear a special guest, then you don't really know what this is all about. See, this is supposed to be the place where we see, we receive instruction, we receive correction, we receive impartation, where the gifts on the inside of you are unlocked, where you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And we had an amazing, wonderful group of hungry people that came here on Friday night at 10 p.m. to 3 in the morning. And we did what we're supposed to be doing anyway, which is seek the face of God. You want your face to shine, then you got to get on your face. Amen. So I want you to share with them a little bit of what you experienced and what God did in your life as you were here with your wife praying and seeking the face of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Glory to your name. He is worthy. To be praised. What we are experiencing right now is the remnants. We're experiencing the remnants of what took place on Friday night. Because the people were here. And we laid out before the Lord. We called on it. Not only did we, 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 we we didn't just want something from him. We, 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 we wanted to be in his presence. We wanted to see his face. I, 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 we didn't come asking him for something. We just wanted to see his glory. So what you're experiencing right now is, 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 is the overflow from what took place on Friday night. So you're just a recipient of those who labor before the Lord. You didn't do anything, but it was those that were here that called upon him, that thanked him, that magnified him, that lifted him up. And because of their works, you are being blessed this morning. We all are being blessed this morning. So Pastor Joe, you asked what we experienced. We, this is what we're experiencing. We experienced like on Friday night what we're experiencing now. His presence. And do realize that this is only just, <laughs> a, yeah, not even a taste of what he has in store for us. Like Pastor said, I, 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 I pray that his spirit is so thick in this room that we are literally suffocated right now in the name that we literally pass out in the name of Jesus because his spirit is just that, just that presence, just that much in this room. So Father God, come have your way right now in the name of Jesus. Arrest us right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, Father. 
hold us captive in this place right now in the name of Jesus. Do with us what you want to do right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we don't have no agenda still, oh God, Father. So you be God. You do what you do, oh God, Father. Hold us hostage, oh God. In your presence, oh God, Father, so that we can magnify and glorify your holy name. We bless you, God. We honor you, Lord. In our spirits, we bow down before you, God, Father, for you are truly worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And amen. Those were my exact thoughts. That this morning as a body, we were able to experience the overflow of those that labored in the presence of God. Because we were praying on Friday even though we didn't feel anything. We were laying out before him because he said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you knock, the door will be open. And we spend so much time seeking everything else. We seek to be around certain people. We seek to make a certain amount of money. We seek to be recognized by a certain group of people. We seek a career. We seek a spouse. We seek relationships. We seek money. We seek favor. We seek open doors. But he said, if you seek me. If you seek me. Place that you have on the inside of you. You keep trying to fill it and fill it and fill it and fill it and fill it. And the more you consume, the emptier you feel. And the more you consume, the emptier you feel. And the more people you sleep with, the emptier you feel. And the more people you give your body to, the emptier you feel. And the more you buy stuff, the emptier you feel. And the more you go here and you travel there. And the more you around the who's who and the what's what, the emptier you feel. And to the point that you start drinking and smoking and maybe I need a little weed and maybe I need a little crack and maybe I need this and maybe I need pain medication. Maybe I need some sleeping pills and you just keep trying to find a way to feel the emptiness. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not ever going to be filled. It's just not going to be filled. But guess what? Religion is not going to fill it either. Come on. Church politics is not going to fill it either. Come on. Playing the games of who's the best person and who's the best usher, who gives the most money and who is important and who's not important and who's the adjutant and who's the pastor's armor bearer and who's the best dress and who's got the nicest shoes within the church. Guess what? That ain't gonna feel it either. That ain't gonna so stop looking down your nose because the world is trying to fill it with drugs and you trying to fill it by making everybody call you apostle and prophet and pastor and teacher and archbishop. You want to put five hundred million. The only thing, the only person that will satisfy is the Holy Spirit. The only person that will satisfy is the Father. The only, the only, would you lift your hand to His presence as His glory is pouring out in this room and ask Him to fill you. <laughs> of the rejection that I felt from my mother, the emptiness of, of the suffering that I've been through. God, fill it. Fill it. Fill it. Fill it. The emptiness of the childhood that was robbed because you were molested and raped. God, fill it. Fill it. The emptiness of not having enough. Fill it, oh God. You fill all in all. You fill all in all. You fill all in all. It's 
It's in you that we live and we move and we have our being, oh God. Feel it. Feel it. So feel me. The word of God says that you must believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And if you are not sure, please, let's be sure this morning. Before I move on, let's be sure this morning. Let's be sure this morning. Let's be sure this morning. Let's be sure. I know there's at least one. I know there's at least one. You're not sure. 
You've been doing your own thing. You've been living life your own way. Maybe you used to serve God. Maybe you used to faithfully do what he's telling you to do. And you've gone off on your own thing for whatever reason. But today God is calling you. The spirit of God is calling you. That's why you're sitting there nervous. Hoping that I move on to the next thing. Because you know that the spirit of God is speaking to your heart right now. And he's saying get your life right. He's saying get your life right. He's saying it doesn't, well, I'm going, I'm going to get my life together and, and then I'll go, I'll come to God. I'm, I'm going to get my life together and then I'm going to come and, and surrender. God, see, you can't, you can't fix it yourself. You need him. And if you know I'm talking to you, get out of your seat and come. Don't be ashamed. Don't worry about anybody else. Examine your own heart this morning. Come on, let's celebrate her as she comes. Come on, come on. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands right here where you are. He loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've been through. He loves you. 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 And you know what? He doesn't love you because you've done everything right. And guess what? Even every preacher that you've ever seen on TV, they still have to go and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Because nobody's good enough to earn the love of God. He loves us because he loves us, and that's it. He don't care what he's done. He still sent his son to die for you and for me. And he says, let me live this life with you, and I'll help you. I'll help you figure out who you are. I'll help you how to live your life. I'll help you how to have a future. I'll teach you. I'll teach you how to be the man you need to be. I'll make you great. My way, says God. And the word of God is simple. It's not hard. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Just say it. everybody together. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. You died for me. You died for me. On that cross. On that cross. All your blood, all your blood, you shed for me, was shed for me, and I thank you. And I thank you. I know without you, I know without you, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. So I ask you, so I ask to forgive me, to forgive me of every bad thing of every bad I've ever done. I've ever done. Wash me, wash me with that blood, with that blood. And you promised, you promised that I would be white as snow. Be my savior. Be my lord. Be my lord. Would you just close your eyes and just lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Extend your hands to them and begin to pray for them. Begin to pray for them. Just bless them and pray for them. Father, I pray right now that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. God, that in, your, in their heart there would be assurance of salvation. In the name of Jesus, in every lie of the enemy, we find it now in Jesus' name. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them. Come on, I need to hear you pray. Open your mouth. As they've made the greatest decision of their life, I'll bless them now. In the name of Jesus, touch now. Fill her now with the Holy Spirit. And heal every broken place of God. Heal every broken place of God. Heal every broken place of God. Heal every Listen, listen, hold on before you go. We're going to want your information. See, because I can't, 
I can't be the doctor in the delivery room and let you come into the world of the spirit and then just put you out on the street. Now I gotta feed you. I gotta take care of you. I gotta teach you how to eat. I gotta teach you who you are in God. And this class, this small group, is gonna give you all an opportunity to be able to understand what does this decision even mean? Because if I just send you up the front door, the devil's gonna eat you alive. And you're gonna be like, oh man, that was just emotional. That wasn't real. And you go back to living the same life you did before. But it is real. It's real. The decision is real. God is real. Jesus is real. And right now on the inside, you're just like a little baby. And you need to eat. You need food. Yes, yes. So will you come? Yes. Okay. I'm going to be looking for you, man. For you. Welcome home, man. Yes. I miss you. I'm going to be looking for y'all. So all of these amazing men and women of God, let's celebrate. There is a rejoicing. spoke to me. Rain Fire Church is a New Testament church. Yes. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes. Healing, deliverance, yes. salvation, yes. breakthrough, people understanding who they are in God. Okay? Third John chapter 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help me deliver your heart and your spirit and your word this morning very quickly. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for everything that you've done. We seal those that have made a decision for Jesus and we declare that the enemy will not be able to take them back. They belong to you. We seal them now by the blood. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. Somebody say with me, beloved. Beloved. I pray, I pray that you may prosper, you may prosper in, all in all things and be in health. And be in health. Just as your soul prospers. Yes, as your soul prospers. 
There's some of you in here that got a nice amount of money, but your soul is broke. You may have a nice house and a nice car, but if your soul and your spirit is broke, it means nothing. It means nothing. In God speaking to us and telling us that this year, 2018, is the year of the shining face, it means that there's there's coming illumination, there's coming elevation, there's coming uh, prosperity, there is coming grace and favor and power and glory. There, there's so much is coming, but there it, it is required of us to maintain a certain posture. So if you've Amen. been living holy, live on. If, if you've been tithing and giving, give on. If you've been praying, then pray on. If you've been fasting, then fast on. And by the way, our, our corporate fast begins tomorrow until the end of January. Our corporate fasting begins tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you how to fast. I'm not going to say to you, this is what you can and cannot eat. You this afternoon are going to spend some time with God and you are going to tell God, God, I want a, a deeper relationship with you. Amen. Tell me what you want me to give up. Amen. For some people, he's going to say, I need you to fast from masturbation. Amen. So for some people, he's going to say, I, I'm going to need you to fast from social media. Amen. For some people... See, because we like to judge people that are in sin, yeah. but we eat crazy and we have a gluttony spirit, mm -hmm. but we want to judge everybody. And for some of you, Jesus is going to say, you need to be eating you some fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and lay off all that other garbage. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, you have to develop your own relationship with Jesus, and he has to tell you, and he may not even tell you, you may have to say to him, God, I, I know I watch way too much TV. I'm going to fast from television. And the time that I would have been fasting, I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to learn how to seek your face. Because let me tell you something. If you're eating all the right foods and you're doing the Daniel fast and you're doing this and you're doing... I'm not eating pork and I'm not eating fish and I'm not eating gluten. I'm gluten free and I'm, I'm vegan and I'm vegetarian. All for the glory of God. We're on our Daniel fast. But you're still gossiping and you're still talking crazy and you're still having crazy conversations and you're still watching all kind of stuff. Guess what? You're just on a diet. It's just a diet. God is not even interested in what it is that you decide to fast. God is not interested if you starve yourself. What he's interested in is in knowing how important am I to you? How important am I to you? See, for me, when I was almost when I was almost getting married to someone else and I was engaged to someone else. God had to stand in my face and say, how important am I to you? Are you willing to walk away from this relationship knowing that this is not the will of God for your life? Or are you going to choose what you want to choose and marry who you want to marry and totally lose the purpose that I have for you? Mm -hmm. yes. And I had to make the choice. When I was in Chicago before I met Corey and I was in a powerful service and I heard the spirit of God say to me, Joanne, do you love me? And I said, yes, God, I love you. He said, Joanne, do you love me? I said, yes, God, I love you. And then he asked me a third time, Joanne, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, do you love me more than your father? And I said, what do you mean? He said, do you love me more than you love your natural earthly father? And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I love you. He said, if you love me, then you must go. Mm. So when I met Corey, I knew that it was the will of God. Was it hard for me to leave my family? Yes. Was it hard for me to leave my church? Yes. I lived four doors down from my dad on the same street. Was it hard? Every holiday I cried. We have no family here. We have no cousins and no aunties and no uncles and no grandparents. We have nobody here. But he said, if you, in this life, give up mother and father, houses and land for my sake, in this life, I'll give you more. And guess what? I left a family of 15 in Chicago. But when I look around, now I see a family of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. He's not going to ask you 
I worked for anything and then not give it back to you, multiply. That's just not who he is. So you're so nervous about letting go. You're so nervous about giving him what he's asked you for. You're so nervous. And, and I gave up that marriage. And I gave up that ring. And, I, and I, the trust was already bought. And the invitations were already out. And everybody was coming. And I gave it all up. And guess what? When, my, when the man that God had for me, he was 20 times better than the man that I left behind. Because he was for me. What's the condition of your soul? Mm, yes. Where is your soul today? Yes. Prosper. To prosper. I know that we automatically think about money. Yep. But to prosper, what is, the, what is the definition? To succeed in an enterprise or activity, especially to achieve economic success. The second definition is to become strong and flourishing. Somebody say strong. Strong. Flourishing. Flourishing. It is the will of God mm -hmm. for you to become strong and flourishing in every area of your life. Amen. It is the will of God for you to be strong and flourishing in your relationships. It is the will of God for you to be strong and flourishing in your family. It is the will of God for you to be strong and flourishing in your career. It's the will of God for you to be strong and flourishing in your finances. See, but the problem is, is that when we try to make all of these other areas of our life strong and flourishing, but then we neglect the root. Yes. Yes. It's like being a tree and you refuse to give the soil any type of miracle growth or any type of nutrient or any anything that's going to fertilize the soil. If you don't fertilize the soil, then you're not going to get as much of a heart. Oh, 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 Jesus. If you don't fertilize the soil, when your apples could be like this, they'll be like this. Why? Because there's no nutrition in the soil to feed the plant. So that the apple and the fruit can grow. And he's saying, my brethren, my sons, my daughters, it is, it is my desire that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul. As your soul. As your soul. Friday night, that miracle grow was in effect. As we were just in the presence of God, that soil was getting turned over. And those rocks were getting pulled out of that soil. Amen. Yeah. Even if you didn't feel anything, mm. but because you made an appointment with God. Right. And you said, God, I'm going to come. I could be at the movie theater. I could be uh, out with friends. I could be at the restaurant. I could be watching the latest flick. I could be doing this and doing that. But I choose to make an appointment with a God that I don't see. Uh, that, uh, God that I don't always feel. But because you said if you seek me, you will find me. I'm going to come and I'm going to keep my appointment. And let me tell you, there are things that you sowed or God sowed in your soil that you may not see come forth till February, March, April, May, June. July, August, but let me tell you, there's greatness in your soil. Now you gotta just keep worshiping and keep praising God and keep loving Him. And I'm telling you, if you follow me and if you listen to me, you will have the greatest year of your life. Because that's why God put me in your life. It's not for me to just tell you, it's your season. But you can live however you want to live. You're gonna go to the next level, but go ahead and keep sleeping around. No, the devil is a liar. You want to sleep around, you're going to cut out your blessing. You want to be nasty and mean even though you've been in church your whole life, but can't nobody sit in your seat because you're about to cuss them out. You know what? You're not going to be blessed either. Because it's about the heart. It is the desire of God that we would prosper, that we would be strong and flourishing in every area of our lives. But the first area of your life that has to be taken care of and fed is your soul. Your soul and your spirit are connected. Yeah. Mm. Come on. See, the people that came down here, mm -hmm. and please let me take my time this morning. You got the rest of the night to do whatever you want to do. Because yeah. 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 we got to break out of this. Yeah. Yeah. This is rain fire. Yeah. This is what we do. The people that came down here, the moment that they believed in their heart, That's right. Come on. and they confessed in their mouth, mm. with their mouth, that Jesus is Lord. Lord, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Their spirit is perfect yes. right now. Their spirit. Yes. 
What is your spirit? Your spirit is what keeps you alive. It's your spirit that has your body moving. Uh -huh. It's your spirit. Your body is going to die and it's going to go into the ground and it's going to turn back into dirt. But your spirit is eternal. Yes. So right now, their spirit yes. Yes. is perfect before God. Every blemish of sin, everything that separated them from God, it is completely gone. Why? Because we're saved by grace. Uh -huh. We're saved by faith and by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is not your spirit. Uh -huh. Come on. It's your soul. Yeah. 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 What's your soul? Your mind. Yeah. What's your soul? Your emotions. Yeah. What's your soul? Well, I don't feel saved. Uh -huh. Maybe I'm not really saved. Yeah. Because your soul, yeah. your spirit is in perfect shape, yeah. but your soul is anorexic. Yeah. Come on. Up a little. See, we go to the gym, we work out. Ooh, look at these arms. Look, ain't nothing wrong with working out. But if the only thing that's being worked out is your body, and it's going into the ground, and it's going to turn back into dirt, the Word of God says that that physical body profits a little. You know, you look good, you feel good, you need to work out. Okay? But make sure that your first workout of the day is your spirit workout. Amen. Start with 10 minutes. Well, I ain't got time, Pastor John. Start with 10 minutes. That's it. Start with 10 uninterrupted minutes. Yes. Focused minutes. Mm -hmm. If you can't give them 10, give them, start with five. All right. Come on. Come on. As you open your eyes and as you roll out of your, look, don't even, don't even take, just roll out and just Because you know how you do. We wake up and we grab the phone and go, oh, let me see what I'm doing. Don't even touch it. So why are you going to let the bad news that might be in your text messages determine the, the path of your day? Why are you going to let that bad email, that, that, that bill, and all of a sudden you're not even out the bed yet and you're already anxious because the bill collector sent you an email? And you let that determine your day. You let that determine your path as opposed to rolling out of the bed and just getting on your knees and saying, God, I thank you for another day. God, I thank you that you're my good shepherd. God, I thank you that you provide for me. God, I thank you that you that you uh, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. God, I thank you that today no weapon formed against me will prosper. God, I give you today my life. God, protect my children. Protect my family. God, don't allow me to get out of your will. God, keep me. I need you today. God, let's have a great day. And you get up and keep on walking. You've at least done something to exercise your spirit. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be some mornings that that sweet Holy Spirit is going to come on you and you're going to feel so good and you're going to start crying because you have that little worship music on and you're going to feel his presence and you're going to be like, oh, okay, wait a minute. And it's going to turn into 11 minutes and then it's going to turn into 13 minutes and it's going to turn into 15 minutes. And you know what? You are going to create an addiction for his presence. And you know what? If you're going to be addicted to anything, if you're going to be addicted to anybody, be addicted to him. Be addicted to his presence. That's what I'm saying. If you just commit to the 10 minutes, then, then we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So you have to make sure that your soul is prospering. I'm going to go through these scriptures quick, so just write them down. You guys already tell me that I go too fast. I'm sorry, but I get excited. John 10, 10 says the thief does not come except, he, doesn't, he, he comes for no other reason except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in good health. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be full of wisdom. He wants you to, to have provision for every good work. He doesn't want you struggling. I declare in the name of Jesus that 2018 is not the year of struggle. Amen. Whatever struggle you have, leave it in 2017. Yes. But this is not the year of struggle. For those that have been seeking the face of God and those that have been dying to their flesh and those that have been loving Jesus and those that have been giving and those that have been saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. This is not the year of struggle. He said he would make a way in the desert 
He said that he would open up wells in the desert. If he can open up wells in the desert, it doesn't matter what your life is looking like. It doesn't matter what the situation looks like. You can come into such a place of believing by faith that he has you, that you will come into abundance. Come on. But guess where the abundance begins? It begins in your soul. It begins on the inside. It begins in your spirit. And that's why Jesus came. Because no matter how much you meditate, no matter how much you hum, 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 and you're looking for inner peace, and you're looking for, oh, what's the new thing? Uh, mindfulness. Oh, this mindfulness now that we're doing in corporate America. Mindful. That ain't none but Buddhism. Mindfulness. Holy Ghostness. How about that? Renewing your mind with the word of God. Jesus. Okay. Matthew 6, verse 8. You have to know who it is that you're serving. You have to know who you're in partnership with. Matthew 6 says, therefore, do not be like them. You're trying to meditate and you're trying to hum and you're trying to do all of this. But with an unrenewed spirit, it will profit you nothing. Because your spirit is still separated from God because of sin. The only way that your spirit can be reconnected to God is through Jesus Christ. Is the heat up? Because I feel like I'm melting. Or is it just the glory? Glory. It's okay because I still got some pounds to go. I'm like, I'm like a sauna up in this place. If your spirit is disconnected from God. It doesn't matter how much you hum. It doesn't matter how much you meditate. It doesn't matter how much you think on good things. You're still going to be led by your flesh. It doesn't matter. But when your spirit is new, when your spirit has been renewed, when your spirit has been reconnected to God through Jesus Christ and through his sacrifice and his lordship, then now you can meditate on the word and there's change. Yes. Now you can pray and you can fast and there's change. Now you can keep your mind on heavenly things and on good things and there's a change. Because now there's something in you that can help produce the godness. Yes. The godness that is in you. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It allows greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It allows him that is in you to come out. Paul said, I, I, I'm in labor pains yes. because I want Christ to be formed in you. That, and when you're not feeding your soul and your spirit, that Christ remains like a little fetus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Christ is sitting there and he's saying, would you, would you feed me? Because yeah. I, want, I, want I want to bring some miracles into your life. Could, could you feed me, please? Yeah. Because I want to teach you how to walk on water. Yeah. Could you feed me a little bit? Because I, I want you to hear my voice. Can, yeah. Could you feed me? Can, can you learn to get in a place where you're concerned about the prosperity of your soul and not so much the prosperity? Because let me tell you, when your soul prospers, when your soul prospers, when your soul prospers, because you've been in the presence of God continually, when your soul prospers, everything about you will prosper. Yeah. To the point... According to the word of God, it says, therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the thing that you have need of before you even ask him. You can get to such a point in your relationship with God, such a point in your relationship with Jesus, that even before the, the, the petition comes out of your mouth, God is already sending the answer. That's prosperity. I remember before I got my TV show, they were telling me about somebody else that was doing a teaching television show. And in my heart, I said, wow, I would like to do that. And two months later, they offered me my own show. I didn't even ask. Well, we're just calling. We were wondering if you would be interested in having a 30-minute weekly t um, teaching show on TV and sounds like, is that something you might be interested in? Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Because I'm doing everything that I can That's right. to tap into the prosperity of my soul. And as my soul prospers, my pocket will prosper. And as my soul prospers, my marriage will prosper. And as my soul prospers, my church will prosper. That means that we, there will be well-being in everything. Yes. We're not just talking about money. Because there's some prosperity that you need that does not have a dollar amount attached to it. Psalms 34.10. I'm holding on to this mm. so tough for this year yes. because the spirit of lack yes. I'm dealing with head on yes. this year. Yes. That's right. Head on. Head on. 
the young lions lack and suffer hunger. And mind you, when the lioness goes out to get food for her cubs, maybe ain't nobody else eating, but I'm gonna promise you the lioness is gonna find something for her babies to eat because they are ferocious. Okay, they are savage, they are ferocious. They're gonna find food for their babies. But even when they can't find food, that means that it's, it's bad. That means that it's more than a drought. It's just, it's extreme lack. <laughs> the young lions, they lack and suffer hunger. So you know that the situation is bad when the mother lion can't find something to feed her babies with. But even in that state, even when the society is in that place, but those who seek the Lord yes. shall not lack any good thing. That's right. And you on the internet, and you trying to figure out how can I make money online? And how can I work from home? And how can I do this? And how can I? And you trying to take two and three and four jobs, and your family life is suffering. You trying to figure out how to make ends meet, and you're trying, and you're and you're wasting away because you're trying to make money. And you're wasting away, and your relationships are falling apart. That is not. It don't matter how much money you bring it in. If your family life is suffering, if your relationships are suffering, then guess what? You're not prosperous. When God is saying, yes, work, yes, have a job, but learn how to seek me and learn to look at me as your supplier. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's right. See, you cannot make your way prosper unless you meditate on the word of the Joshua 1.8. Right. Meditate on the word of the Lord, on the, on the book of the law, day and night, so that you may observe it, so you may see what the principles are, so that you may do what it says. And then you will make your way prosper. And you will have great success. Yeah. See, there is a way in the kingdom to be successful. There's a way in the kingdom to be prosperous. And guess what? It's a prosperity and it's a success that won't damage you. Right. Because you'll stay humble. And you won't be arrogant. And you won't be proud. Isaiah 55. This is my last scripture. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Yeah. Call upon him. While he is here. Yes. But this is our part. Let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. He will have mercy on him. And to our God. For he will abundantly partner. I don't care if you lived 2017 like a devil. If you gave your life to God today. If you got your heart right with God today, if you lined your heart up and your spirit with God today, and you say, today, God, I will seek you. Today, I will turn from my wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal. See, if you make that decision today and you live in that decision, from now moving forward, you're getting ready to have the most prosperous, blessed, joyful, peaceful year of your life. Somebody receive that this morning. I receive it. Close your Bibles, lift your hands in the presence of God. God. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so humbled by your presence, by your word. Teach us to seek your face. Teach us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. God, I thank you that you are realigning our spirit with you. To know the path that we must aggressively take for the turnaround, for the breakthrough, for the next level. God, I pray that in this house and every person that is under the sound of my voice and every person that watches on Periscope and every person from around the world that watches on YouTube. God, that there would be a spirit of spiritual hunger. God, that there would be a spirit of starvation in their heart for the presence of God. And in that place. You'll be able to do whatever it is that you need to do in their life. And they're going to walk into the greatest season of favor and of success and of glory. 
that they have ever stepped into. And it's going to be from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory on top of glory on top of glory. And it will not be for our damage, but it will always be to give you that glory. And as the glory comes to us, we'll give it back to you. And the glory comes to us, we'll give it back to you. And as people look at us, we'll point back to you. And as the glory is making our face shine, we're not going to cover it up like Moses did. But we're going to say, you want to have a shiny face too? Come on, let me teach you how to get it. Because you said, if I be lifted up. But you would draw all men unto you. So we dedicate our lives to you once again. And we thank you because you chose us. We thank you because you loved us. We thank you, God, because our mother didn't have a miscarriage or an abortion. God, we thank you that we're here to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you celebrate the Lord and his presence and his word this morning? And with that same excitement. With that same excitement, sit down. With that same excitement, Jesus came to the ocean. And see, he said, hey, let me use your boat. I need to preach. And they've been up fishing all night long and caught nothing. And they were already washing their nets. And Jesus, Jesus said, give me your boat. And Jesus took the boat, taught the people from the boat, and then he brought the boat back and he said, now go and cast your net. Well, we, we've been fishing all night long. Uh -huh. Come on. Go cast your net. And the next thing you know, in the day, you don't fish at day during the day because the fish can see the net. We fish at night. They have been fishing all night long. Uh -huh. But in the day, because they were obedient to Jesus and gave him what he asked for, when they turned around, there was so much plenty that they had to ask other boats to come to help yes. with the harvest. As you get ready to prepare your tithe and your offering for the Lord, yes. let this be the year that you are not afraid to truly bring your tithe to God. Let this be the year that you are not afraid yes. to take 10 cents of every dollar and say, God, yes. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to test you now in this Amen. because yes. whatever he asks you for, he's not going to take it and keep it for himself. Amen. He didn't take the boat and keep it for himself, but he used it and gave it back with the power to multiply. And when he went about doing what he was already usually doing, he was able to produce more. So if God asks you for your time, well, I ain't got time. I, I, I got to work. No, he's going to multiply your time because you gave him the tithe of your time. And so now he's going to teach you how to use your time more wisely so it doesn't take you as long to do things as it did before. When you give him your tithe and your money, all, it doesn't leave your life. You're just, here you go, God, it belongs to you. And he's going to take it into the kingdom and he's going to work on it. He's going to multiply it, and he's going to give it right back to you. And he said, test me. Test me. So as we prepare our tithe and our offering, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. We'll give you an envelope. If you want to use our text to give system, you can use that as well. And you can text Rainfire, one word, Rainfire to 77977. It's probably the easiest way to set up your giving. Mm -hmm. You can text Rainfire, one word, put it in the message, Rainfire, and send it to the number 77977. Mm -hmm. And you hit send and it'll send you back a link and you'll be able to set up your giving. But let this be the year that you learn to be a faithful tither. Yes. That you live in covenant with God and watch God perform for you. When I tell you, we've watched God perform for us. You know, we're still working on the new sanctuary. 
we acquired the building across the street and our heart and our desire was to have the children here and we had come to the end of our lease see I can tell you the testimony now we had come to the end of our lease and they were trying to give us an exorbitant amount of lease that they wanted starting in the new year and I said Lord I'm not paying that the church is not going to pay that and the last meeting I went and I had with them for the first time out of their mouth came well, this is what the realtor is asking for, but it's negotiable. I said, yeah. Thank you. So just this last Friday, we put down a new contract for this space so that our children have their sanctuary once we're done in the new sanctuary. 12 months. Almost half of what they were originally asking for. Because I walk in favor. from the back to the front and as you come man today has been exciting as you saw you can see just the chaplain comes so you can close us out in prayer brother chaplain once you get you can close us Come on, give with joy. Give with joy as you come, as you come, as you come. Just thank the Lord. 
Thank the Lord that He is your provider. He is, he is the one that provides for you and for your family. He is your source. We bless your home. We bless your families. Hallelujah. And if you would stand up to your feet, we get ready to go. I'm going to ask Brother Chapman, this man of God, to just bless us as we get ready to go from this place. Amen. Are you ready? spoken today. Father God, that it is planted inside of fertile soil, Lord God, that when we brought into the world, that the distractions and the stress of everyday life will not take out this moment. That this moment will be solidified and cemented in our spirit to give us something to a reserve to fall back on when life throws everything at us, Lord God. We thank you for the woman of God. We thank you for Pastor Joanne, Lord God, and her husband, Lord God. And we ask that you would move on them, move in this house, oh God. And may you always get the glory, the power, and the glory, and the praise. It is in the righteous name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, long life, health, peace, prosperity, and abundance is on you. No accidents, and no infirmity. In Jesus' name. Tuesday, small groups. Sign up for your small group if you have not yet signed up. Right at the table in the back, there are people that are there to answer your questions. And make sure you're here to plug in for your small group, okay? I love you and thank you for being with us this morning. Hallelujah.